The LAC operon is a widely used example of transcriptional gene regulation in prokaryotes. It is popular for several reasons. It was the first operon discovered. Jacob and Minot won the Nobel Prize for its discovery in 1965. The regulatory components of this operon are used for cloning in labs around the world, and properties of the LAC operon illustrate many important features of the way prokaryotes regulate gene expression. An operon is a length of DNA that contains a number of structural genes preceded by a regulatory region. The regulatory region is separated into the promoter and the operator. Genes on the operon are expressed when an RNA polymerase binds to the promoter region, then moves down the DNA strand using the sequence as a template for the synthesis of messenger RNA. Prokaryotes are able to use operons to control the expression of multiple genes because prokaryotic mRNA can be polycystronic, meaning a single strand of mRNA can encode for multiple proteins. Regulatory proteins that control gene expression are encoded by genes present elsewhere on the genome. The LAC operon is comprised of a promoter and an operator and then three genes, LAC-Z, which encodes beta-galactosidase, an enzyme responsible for degrading lactose, LAC-Y, which encodes lactose permease, a transport protein that helps bring lactose into the cell, and the LAC-A gene, which carries information required to synthesize lactose acetylase, an enzyme whose role does not appear to be essential as cells with a defective LAC-A gene are capable of growing on lactose. The LAC operon is under specific control of a protein encoded by the LAC-I gene. The LAC-I gene is upstream of the LAC operon, oriented in the opposite direction, and is regulated by a different promoter. The term specific control here means it controls the expression of just this one operon. The product of the LAC-I gene is lactose operon repressor protein, also called LAC-I. LAC-I is a repressor, meaning that when it is active, its presence prevents the expression of the genes in the operon. It does this by binding to the operator region, physically blocking the activity of RNA polymerase. Regulatory proteins that act to prevent gene expression exert negative control on the operons they regulate. Negative control is just another way of saying it is a repressor. To allow expression of the LAC operon, LAC-I needs to be removed from the operator. Allolactose, which is formed from lactose by LAC-Z, is the signal molecule E. coli cells use to detect the presence of lactose. When lactose is present in the cell, some of it gets converted to allolactose. This allolactose binds to LAC-I, causing a conformational change in LAC-I that makes it separate from the operator, allowing RNA polymerase to transcribe the operon. Since lactose is usually absent under normal conditions, allolactose is not present, therefore LAC-I is active, bound to the operator, preventing expression of the operon. Genes and operons that are usually off and are only expressed under specific conditions are called inducible. So the LAC operon is an inducible operon under the specific negative control of the repressor LAC-I. Each of these terms are one of a pair of alternative options in contrast to inducible. Genes that are normally on but are turned off under some conditions are called repressible. Regulatory molecules that influence multiple promoters are called global regulators. Regulatory molecules whose activity promotes gene expression exert positive control and are called activators. This terminology gives us a variety of ways to describe different patterns of transcriptional gene regulation. An example of an activator is the global regulator CRP, which stands for cyclic AMP receptor protein. Bacteria can metabolize many different sugars, but will preferentially use glucose whenever it is available. So when glucose is present, the metabolic pathways for using less desirable sugars do not need to be active even if these sugars are available. In the presence of glucose, CRP is inactive, unable to bind to DNA. When glucose is not available, the cells produce cyclic AMP, which is the signal molecule that binds to CRP, causing a conformational change that allows it to bind to DNA. This tells the cell that glucose is not available and that the cellular machinery needs to start synthesizing enzymes to utilize other energy sources. As a global regulator, CRP binds to many promoters that regulate sugar metabolism, including the LAC operon. CRP binds to the promoter region and helps RNA polymerase line up with and bind to the promoter. So the LAC operon is under both negative control by the repressor LAC-I and positive control by the activator CRP. This dual regulation is a common pattern in bacteria. It gives cells very fine control of gene expression.
under normal conditions where glucose is present and lactose is not, lac I is bound to the operator, CRP is inactive, and the operon is not expressed. Only when glucose is absent and lactose is present will the conformation of both of these regulators result in the expression of the operon and the production of the enzymes needed to metabolize lactose. Because either the presence of glucose or the absence of lactose will prevent expression of the operon. Features of the lac operon described here illustrate general patterns of gene regulation in prokaryotes. Repressors typically bind to the operator region and either block the binding of RNA polymerase or prevent it from moving down the DNA if it does bind, while activators bind further upstream and help RNA polymerase to bind. Most regulators have a binding site for signal molecules like allolactose or cyclic AMP, and interactions with these signals allow cells to use activators and repressors to control gene expression based on environmental conditions. A combination of specific and global regulators allow prokaryotes to regulate gene expression based on both general conditions and the availability or need for specific resources. Many different regulatory pathways have been characterized in E. coli and other prokaryotes. In fact, it is estimated that more than 5% of E. coli's genome is dedicated to the synthesis of regulatory proteins. This huge variety of activators, repressors, cofactors, and signal molecules allow prokaryotes to efficiently regulate gene expression by controlling the production of mRNA transcripts in response to changing conditions within and around the cell. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment with any questions or suggestions, and if you want to keep up with the content here at Science Primer, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.